Hi guys, George here. Today what I'm going to bring to you is the grand finale of Scenario S4 Welcome Back that takes place in Hosingen, Luxembourg on the 16th of December 1944. Hmm. Um, so where we left off last time, uh, the Germans managed to uh, bust the, uh, um, the American center and it appears that I have enough uh, uh, points still on the board to possibly wedge out a victory for the Germans. It may not be like, uh, likely, but I do have here a, a half squad which is worth one point. Um, I have uh, this fellow was supposed to be DM'd, right? And I still have here one point, possibly if this guy, this fellow, or this squad. Uh, self rallies another two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine for the uh, leader, um, 10, 11, 13, 14, 15. How did I get that right? Let's, let's just count the uh, units that are not broken. One for him, and then there's another four here, that's five. Five and then uh, nine, and then here uh, thirteen. So I can wedge out a victory if I get lucky, more or less. All right. So let's start with our self rally. Let's roll for weather. I'm assuming that there's still uh, snow on the ground or uh, snowfall. All right. So that didn't happen. I'm going to have a self rally here, which means that I need snake eyes. Nope, it didn't happen, but his DM comes off. Let's see, what is, oh, that's a half squad, so it would only be one point. Get rid of the DM. And uh, I moved up the casualties up there, so I can put the victory uh, units here, so we can count them. Now, uh, he didn't self-rally. Let's try and, and rally this fellow here, the broken leader. His actual morale, because he's wounded, is seven. So uh, plus three to my dice roll would need a three to rally. Whoa, he's a goner. He's a goner. Ah, I wonder if that means that um, he's a goner. That means this fellow, uh, actually, he, he wouldn't need a task check or or uh, the MMC would not need a task check or a leader loss morale check because his actual uh, morale is uh, a seven. So he just goes to the casualty bin and that means he's up there. Unbreak him. Steiner is gone. No, uh, guess uh, Mr. H cannot count on Steiner to, to um, cure him. We'll leave his DM on. Don't have to leave it on, but um, hey, what the heck? We'll leave it off. Well, if it, I'd rather keep it on so I can route. Yeah, yeah, that that makes sense, I believe. All right, uh, let's see if we can rally that unit there. That leader Schwartz rally. I said it. He did it. Break. And uh, now we're going to try and uh, rally that squad. So the squad needs an eight. Snake eyes. Good. No heat of battle in this game, unfortunately. But he's up. So that's pretty okay. Um, yeah, let's start a log here. No, I still have a log. That's good. Okay. Good stuff. We have a log. Let's go to prep. Of course, we're not going to prep. Now, um, this unit will have to lose his CX. We're on movement phase, and we have to find a, a, a safe venue uh, to exit our squad. Now, if he goes here, he can fire on him, but he may want to hold his fire. Um, but... Um, the other thing you can do is go one, two, three, and four to there. Uh, and at that point, uh, let's do that. One, two, three, and four. 
Now, it may be blocked there. And uh, the fact that there's a building in his way, and he doesn't want to do a loss check, it's pretty blocked. I'd, I'd say he will hold his fire and wait for a better target. Um, now, the other unit here uh, is a conscript, and they can go CX, um, and they can only go CX, they can only move five with the leader, right? And I looked at the chart here with four portage points. Um, a CX MMC with a leader can still move six uh, movement factors. Right. Yeah. So they can uh, double time. Not have to worry about them. Um, subtract one MF for all cases for inexperienced penalties. So he, they still have five. So I'm looking at chart A4 in my rat charts, but you have the same. Um, you have the same little table um, on your uh, starter kit charts. So they have five doing double time. So we declare double time. We don't declare CX. We declare double time. As uh, David Garvin correct, correctly noted, and we should be having our, our thinking cap on. I'm not using my, my uh, military uh, helmet. It was too harsh. Uh, all right. Now it wasn't really. Uh, coffee. But we're happy with that unit going there. We have um, at least one victory point. So now we're concentrating on Boomer going double time. That would be probably one, two, three, four, five uh, CX, and then they can advance there. Yeah, I think that's the safest bet for him. Or they can go, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five. That's really the safest bet that they can do. And then uh, afterwards, if they advance here, they would have to go one, two, three, four, five, or one, two, three, four, five. And then from that point on, uh, they would advance off the board for uh, four uh, victory points. As for this fellow, Fortunately, there's no dash in the SK. It would have to go one, two, three, four, five, and six to there. Do they have to go six to there? No, no, no. They could stay there and advance into this hex. And then they would be going somewhere along this line. Um, what choice do they have? They have to run the gauntlet. So let's move this fellow here first. Let's uh, not forget, these guys have now arisen. All right, so let's take it nice and slow. One to there. His line of sight is blocked by this building here. Pretty sure. His line of sight may or not be blocked by this building here, at this juncture here. Do we take the last check? Or wait until he comes closer? Could be wrong, but this building here looks like it's an obstacle. So one to there, two to there. Now he's at one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, and he would be halved. And there is a risk that this building here is blocking his line of sight. Uh, Boy. Oh boy. You know what? We're going to take a shot there. Let's see. So typically this fellow's in you know, eight. Hey, it's clear. Range of six, so his um, firepower is half to, to to three and a half. 
So we'll go down to the two table. Uh, he's at six. So it's plus one for the snow hindrance, minus one um, for non-assault movement. So it's a two even shot. So we'll take that shot. Seven on the two. It's probably a pin check. No, it's a miss. So that leaves one residual there. Not that it matters. Okay, so he first fired. Uh, pretty confident his line of sight is blocked. So it's one, two, three to there. Pretty confident that the, the line of sight is blocked. CX four five. He's a conscript unit. Okay. Now Dowell's going to move. One to there. One to there. Well, this guy doesn't have this uh, unit. These units don't have line of sight to there, blocked by this building. This fellow might have one, two, three, four, five, six. He might be blocked by this line, uh, this building here. And he only has one shot. He does no longer is in possession of a, uh, of a weapon. So he started here, one, two, three, four, five, six off the board. Uh, yeah. So we got four victory points right there. ECX, um, the next dude, We'll go one, two, no, one, two, three, four, five to there, and maybe six. Now, let's do this. One. Now, he will fire there. These units will fire there. So it's uh, plus one for the hindrance, minus one for the leader minus one for non-assault movement. So it'll be a six down one. And the snow hindrance is not in effect. Um, six down one, let's do that. Four and six. Four and the six is two morale check. So two MC, uh, Mueller needs a six or less. Does not get it. What's their ELR? Three ELRs. Uh, let's see, three. Uh, and I rolled a, uh, a 12. So, yep, uh, eight, nine, 10, 11 ELRs. And breaks. Okay. And uh, squad needs a five. Breaks. All right, and he first fired. Okay. Hmm. So we got one, two, three. No, oh, actually, a uh, one. Each SMC is worth uh, plus one, zero, or uh, uh, plus one. So we got one two, three, four uh, victory points. These guys, if they make it off the board, will be, uh, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So 
this guy breaking is not uh, so bad, but this unit really needs to do something now. Uh, he first fired. We leave some residuals there. It was a six, so it's two residuals. Not that it matters, but just for being efficient and proficient, we should be doing it. Okay. Now comes the hard part. Uh, this unit will go CX as well. And it, they're using non-assault movement, so it's one to there. And of course, he'll fire. So there's no question that there is a low S there. And we have 6 plus 8 is 14. We'll go down to 12. Uh, and the firepower factors are plus 1 for the... Uh, uh, for the uh, orchard minus one for non-assault movement they cancel each other out so it's a 12 down two nearly broke the gun does not get raid he first fired uh 12 down two 12 down two with an 11 that's probably a nine on the 12 chart which is a normal morale check believe it or not Yep, quick math here. Quick math, 11 minus two is nine. Jeez, all right. So nine is a normal morale check, ladies and gentlemen. So we have a normal morale check. We need seven of us. But we leave six residuals there. Wow. All right, so we got one to there. Two, three, four, five, six. Jeez. Now these fellows are going to go CX as well. And that's a second line squad. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Get rid of one CX counter. I think a victory eludes me. Anyway, let's go to the defensive fire. So defensive fire, he'll blow that uh, that um, flamethrower at 12 even over there. Let's see what happens there. At eight on the 12, and he still has uh, his flamethrower around. Uh, is a one morale check, so that the unit needs a five or less. Uh, he dies. It was a half squad. Uh, let's see. Brit, oops, up there you go. We'll join Steiner. And he first fired. He doesn't have a target, I don't believe, for for his inherent firepower. He final fired right there. There's nobody adjacent to him. Nobody adjacent to him. There's nobody closer to him. We should have removed all residuals at this stage. Um, and that's all she wrote, really. So, advancing fire. We can actually fire back from here to there. Or maybe we shouldn't. Because each unit will be quartered. One, two, three, four, five, six. Each unit, each infantry unit will be quartered. Um, and an additional plus one for being CX and additional hindrance of plus one for for being in the that uh, incurring that uh, uh, hindrance would afflict the hit their die roll so that that doesn't sound too good to me um, oh what the heck no two up four up five oh no 
Don't even think about that one. Drug phase. Let's remove all prep and residuals and moves. And let's route. Uh, let's remove all prep and uh, death fire. There you go. Um, this unit doesn't need to route, but now they can route to there. Uh, these units can not route back to there. Can they? They can't route back to there. But they can route forward because they don't. This is their closest cover that is not getting closer to this unit. They, can they see this dude? Well, well, let's see. Nope. So they can route forward. So in fact, they can go to, they're not getting closer to him, and four, and possibly even six. Because at no time can they see Murphy. At no time can they see Taylor, and if they did from here or there, it's still getting further away. So this is an excellent example of routing forward. Hoorah! And you route forward because you're getting closer to your victory objective. He broke here. He couldn't go there. He could very well go there because it's not getting closer to any of these units. And he wasn't able to see Murphy from all the way back there. Now, if he was there, could he possibly see this unit that was in Nelly? Possibly yes. Possibly yes. Now, he broke here. Let's take a look at that line of sight. There's only one hindrance. Now, if a unit is in melee, that's not an illegal route. He breaks an M7, and right along the hex line, he does have loss to this unit there. And there was only one hindrance, if I recall. So this is, in fact, an illegal route, thanks to this unit here. So basically, and you can see here, so you can't get any closer to that unit, that's for sure. And you can't go there anymore, because that would bring him closer to this unit, which was previously in his line of sight. I guess he has to route here. A little crawl to there. That's a shame. That's really a shame. Okay. Advanced phase. He advances off the board. The closest that they can get off the board to is Y1. Y1. And these fellows go to P5. So they'll have one wild chance to um, get off the board. All right, let's remove all moves and advance this board to close combat. Next. We only have one close combat here, which is this unit here. So the German needs a one to two. And uh, the Bronze Star American second line troop it has a two to one. So the one to two first, that's pretty close. One to two half squads 
uh, with a row of four half squads, the American unit, and a two to one for the American unit, seven or less, makes it. So this fellow here, half squads, clone, put him up there, and this fellow is gone. And they're no longer in melee. At this juncture, I like to make uh, do a a um, incremental save. So we'll do a, a save as here, and that was five a. Dot png and file save game as five a dot vsav great okay now I guess we can swing uh, to American turn five and since it's the Americans rally phase we'll roll for weather whoa it stops snowing it stops snowing as per the SSR uh, less than or equal to three I don't have the less than sign here because that's part of my uh, that's a little hiccup in my HTML I use HTML to, to fix these things so let's go to rallies and let's go to self rally we'll try and self rally this dude here seven or less does not make it his DM comes up Remember, there's one more German turn left, so it doesn't matter. He's out of the game. Um, let's see. Do we have any other broken units uh, on the American side? Uh, he was our self-rally. He lost his DM. Now, this fellow is going to try and rally. Uh, he needs a three or less. Let's not make it. Uh, I'm going to choose to leave their DM off. There. There's no point. Unfortunately, unfortunately, he couldn't run forward. He was able to see that unit there. I'll look in the rules to see if, if uh, uh, well, let's, let me take a quick look in the rule book now to see if that route was legal or not. Okay, hold on one second. So here's the rule reference, uh, 3.6, page 16. In so doing, a routing unit may not route towards an enemy unit, even if it is broken while in that enemy's loss in in any way which decreases the range and hexes between the routing unit and the known enemy unit nor may it move towards such a unit after leaving its loss during that route phase so in this case um, that unit in m7 did have loss to there and moving it one hex couple of hexes forward would have brought it closer to that uh, unit so we're kind of right all right, um, so rally phase, um, we're going to eliminate that DM uh, and try to rally out in the open ground if we're not DM'd again. Um, now, uh, for the last phase, for good old, yeah, good old Americans, remember now we, it stopped snowing thank uh, let's thank our luck for for uh, the good weather what we're going to do is not prep fire nothing good happens in prep fire good old uh, major garden said that uh, and go straight to the movement phase how does that sound great so this fellow here will assault move to there using non-assault movement we're going to do this. Two, four. Now these units are, are under CX, um, but they will take advantage of that and fire there. Uh, and the total modifiers are uh, plus one for the hindrance, plus three for um, the terrain, minus one for non assault movement. Uh, plus one and minus one for uh, the 
leadership in being CX. So we have a total of eight firepower factors. Let's recap that again. Eight IFT plus one hindrance uh, plus three TEM minus one first fire non-assault movement plus one CX and minus one for the leader. So four, three, back to four, back to three. So an eight up three shot. Let's do that. IFT. Wow. Seven on the eight. There's a one morale check and no rate because that MMG has a rate of fire of two. One morale check. The leader needs seven or less. Uh, leader pins. And now the squad needs a five or less. He has a six, ELR of three. Uh, that was a one morale check, he rolled a 10. So this fellow ELRs and breaks. Okay, now we're in movement mode, so we'll do this, one, two, three, four, and these guys are now DM'd. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, so this, these fellows are going to go CX as well, double time. I'm not going CX, they're going double time. CX is the counter. The counter exhausted. So we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 to there. 1, hey, move along. 1, 2, 3, 4. I can risk clipping this building. 5, 6. Now they're closer, and these guys first fired. And they can fire it back to there. Uh, and uh, it would be intensive fire for the MMG. So we could mark them with a final fire counter. Let's do it once it's done. Intensive fire for the MMG. And final fire, so that would be halved. So we got two. We would have a four. A four, let's take a look at the modifiers. Four IFT. There you go. Four IFT. Minus one for first fire and on assault movement. Minus one for the leader. Minus one for the flamethrower. Plus three for the TEM. Plus one for the hindrance. Right? And uh, plus one for CX. So the total positive modifiers are five. The total uh, negative modifiers are three. So five minus three is two. So it's a four up two. Let's do a four up two and see what we get. And don't forget it's intensifier or sustained fire for the MG. Holy cow! Well, oh, that that fellow didn't have a rate. So now we got a five on the four. Five on the four. So another one morale check. Uh, one morale check. So they need a six or less. We made it. Uh, we got two residuals there. And previously we had four, no, uh, two residuals here as well because of the hindrance. And then this should be one residual then. Decrease. There we go. Because of the hindrance. And a final fire. They didn't break the machine gun. Now 
that's all she wrote? Perhaps. Let's see. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. Oh, he already got the bronze star. Let 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 let's bring him back to uh, uh, back from the war. Uh, these fellows have yet to earn their their brass. These guys, well, he broke. Uh, enough said. And these guys, they're CX and they did ELR, so they don't deserve any awards. Let's go to defensive fire, and this is an important shot. This is the most important shot. Remember, there's no weather. And what do we got here? What do we have here? Uh, defensive fire. These guys are firing back to there. Aha! Don't switch sides on me, George. All right. They're firing back to there. Now there is no hindrance. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six hexes away. No weather. So two for the uh, four, four, seven. Two for the M MMG is four. No, actually five. So we got two plus five is seven. Plus two is nine. Plus three is a 12. Yeah, it's a total of 12 firepower factors. One, two, three, four, five, six hexes away. The MGs are not half, only the squads. So we got 12 up four. It's a 12 up 4 shot. Let's see how much that will give us. They don't cower because it's leader directed. But we got 10 on the 12th chart. It's a PTC. Which they should pass easily. No, they don't. So leader pins. And the squad... Makes it. <laughs> oh, so funny. Oh, geez. Coffee time. Coffee time. Holy moly. All right, we did what we could do. Let's go to advancing fire. And he final fired. We don't have any other units on the board. So let's go to advancing fire. These guys were broken. So there's a 24 shot right there with a flamethrower. Uh, let's see what happens. Eight on the 24, uh, 24, and they rolled a eight. That's good. Eight on the 24 is a two morale check. I think a couple of Germans are going to be fried here. A two morale check. Mayor needs a six morale check. He is uh, wounded, and let's take a wound severity. So he's just wounded there and uh, squad needs a five or less he half squads if he's not already half squad he was a half squad up he goes and now uh, inherent firepower is an eight even shot because of salt fire uh, he cowers to a 6, so 4 on the 6 is a 1MC again, so the leader needs a, a 6 or less because he's wounded, he's dead, and uh, squad needs a, said it was a 2 morale check, so we need a 4 or less, and he's dead. And then here's where the casualties mount. This is almost like a bar chart. Wow. Advance fired here. 
Okay, uh, remove all uh, residuals. Here, the um, um, the um, flamethrower will fire there, and now the, my question would be there. I know that the CX applies. Does the hindrance apply? The TEM doesn't apply for sure, but does the hindrance apply? Uh, let's look that up. So I just confirmed my knowledge to be more or less correct. I did have my doubts, sure. But uh, here's the, the trick. Uh, uh, rule 4.2, page uh, 19. Uh, a flamethrower is a support weapon with a normal range of 1 hex and a firepower factor of 24. A pin unit cannot fire a flamethrower. A flamethrower may attack at long range at half firepower. That's 2 hexes. A flamethrower is never increased for PBF, TPBF. A flamethrower is not halved during the advancing fire phase, but is affected by cowering. Flamethrower attacks are resolved on the IFT, receive no DRM for leadership or TEM, but smoke and hindrances do apply. All right, let's minimize that, and let's take our 12 plus 2 shot. Yep, 12 plus 2. Another good roll. Uh, 7 on the 12 is a 1 MC. So Bruner needs a seven pins, and uh, the four six, the four three six needs a five. Breaks, breaks. Uh, rolls a nine. Elr is a three, so we're good. But breaks. You can't Elr anymore anyway. In any case. But Bruner is pinned. So let's move that uh, those units on top. Like that. He advanced fired. He can fire his inherent firepower at uh, four up four, but that uh, ain't gonna do much. Now here, Murphy's pinned. And this fellow is one, two, three, four, five, six X's away. There's no more weather. The HMG cannot fire in the advancing fire phase. So we have, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. So he's only halved at um, three. Fractions rounded up is four. Uh, plus a soft uh, fire makes it a five. So it goes a four even shot to there. Let's roll and see what happens. Seven on the four is just a pin task check. And he advanced fired, so we need three sevens. Uh, task check one makes it. Two pins, three makes it. So one unit pins, it's the unit with the LMG. And we'll move the other. Uh, two units just on top of the pin marker, like that. And he final fired. Uh, no, he advanced fired. Advanced fired. Boink. He advanced fired. And we're good to go. So let's go to route phase. Route, 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 run away. Let's remove all residuals, prep, and defensifier. Um, can he see this fellow? Well, he doesn't have to route uh, because he's not adjacent, and it's the American player uh, that routes first. So he can stay where he is. These guys can stay where they are. It's this fellow that has to route, and at this juncture, he should try and make it to one of these woods here. Actually, this woods here, so he's going to low crawl to there. He can't. There's nothing there. Darn it. Get rid of that DM. There's just only a support weapon there. Hmm. Get rid of the move as well, George. He doesn't have to route because he's not adjacent to him. I don't think he could see this guy. Um, nope, the building is in the way, clearly. 
can he route to there or there? Is it worth his while? Uh, no, it's not. It's not. Now, how many uh, points do we have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine points. I think I missed the mark by one. We'll see what happens. This is the last phase. So let's go to advanced phase at this juncture. And he'll stay where he is. Uh, he will advance to there. Now, in hindsight, I would should have probably routed to here. Yeah, maybe not. We'll see what happens. Okay. Uh, let's see what happens. <laughs> um, yeah. He annihilated this guy. Can't believe it. Advanced phase, he advanced to there. He's good where he is. Well, he can't go anywhere. Uh, he He's pretty much did his job. He doesn't want to advance anywhere. Or should he? I think he should. I think he should advance to here. I'll explain why later. He's pretty much out of the fight. Let's go to close combat. There isn't any, I don't believe. Um, that's all she wrote. So let's go to uh, German turn six. Leave that there. And let's go to rally phase. Let's roll for weather. Is it going to start snowing again? No, nearly did by one. All right. Uh, rallies. Let's see what kind of rallies we have. All right. Uh, there is no self rally for the American, but uh, the German player should rally here, and uh, they'll remove all pins. Pins, pins, pins come off. So you got to be careful here because uh, we have a minus one leader and terrain and plus four for the. Uh, uh, DM marker. So one, two, three or less. Rally. Oops. Uh, DM come, uh, stays on. Here, the leader is good. So the squad needs a three, four, five or less. Does not make it. The DM comes off. Wipe on, wipe off type of thing. Hmm. All right. Uh, the uh, right. Okay. So what do we do here? What do we do is uh, turn off the that marker that marks our our uh, units as uh, uh, broken, and uh, we concluded the German uh, rally phase. Go to prep. There isn't any. Go to movement. They lose their CX marker, and they come off. And now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine uh, victory points. So basically, in order for the uh, Germans to win, this fellow here has to lose that squad and go one, two, three, four, five, six, run the gauntlet, and try to win. Um, so will Brunner win it for the um, for the Germans? So this fellow is broken. He's pretty much out of the game. This guy's not broken. So he's not out of the game. So he, this fellow will lose his CX, run the gauntlet, and go one to there. Uh, no fire. Two to there. I still think that it may or not be blocked. Let's eyeball it. Oh, it's not blocked. And it's one, two, three hexes away. Uh, so let's see. Let's draw a line of sight and make sure everything's hunky dory. No hindrances. Three hexes away. Uh, but this dude is CX. Uh, so it will be a six. Uh, 
6. He does suffer from uh, FFNM and NAM and FFMO. So it's down to plus 1 for CX6, uh, down 1. He cowers, and it's a 7, 7 on the 4 table which is a PTC, he final fired. Uh, task check needs an ARLS. Passed. Uh, this dude here le leaves two residuals in there. And uh, he'll go on his merry way. So goes to there. So one, two, three. Now here, this fellow, what is there are two residuals there? Good old Murphy, he pops up. So he's at one, two, three. Murphy's gonna take a shot there. So what do we got here? One, uh, we got one hindrance. Range of five. There's a range of six, no weather. So range of five, one hindrance. At one hindrance, FFNAM only applies. So we got six plus eight is uh, uh, 14, goes down to the 12 firepower factors, 12 IFT uh, plus one uh, for the hindrance. Uh, minus two leadership DRM and uh, minus one for FFNAM. So the total negative modifiers are negative three plus one uh, for the hindrance. It's a 12 up two. Let's take that 12 up. No, 12 down two. Mm. 12 down 2. Let's take that 12 down 2 shot and see what happens. Whoa, that's a good roll. 5 on 12 chart and rate. <laughs> that's a 2 morale check. He needs a 6 or less. Pins, and I think that's the game. Because he can't exit off the board, and the German players. Lost by one victory point. And that was by running right down the middle, more or less. So, I'm not too sure what you think about that. Um, 53 minutes, and this is the conclusion. Now, um, just to give you a little heads up on, um, on uh, this scenario, uh, I think I will do uh, an analysis uh, that, uh, about this uh, uh, scenario. It seems to be pretty even-sided. Um, if you play it well, it appears that uh, either side can win. Uh, so in, in this respect, I think that, you know, maybe I, I should have play, paid uh, more credence to the uh, ROAR data. I'm not sure. But... Um, it wasn't without heavy losses. I believe that uh, as the German player, you have to be prepared to take some losses uh, as the attacker. And if you, you're not, then you really will not pass your personal morale well enough to, to uh, run past uh, Dear Murphy with his HMG and minus two DRM. Um, yeah, so on, in a future video, I think I'm going to do an analysis uh, uh, with respect to this uh, scenario and uh, probably concentrate on rate of fire and whatnot. Um, as you can see, uh, in this um, particular instance, um, Murphy kept great on that HMG uh, quite a few times. He was really the game changer in, the, in this scenario, uh, principally by really uh, annihilating this group um, and it was a miracle that these guys uh, made a, a comeback. 
And here he saved the game by uh, ensuring that this victory point did not go off the uh, off the map. So that's the conclusion, guys, of uh, scenario S four. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and uh, uh, stay tuned for more action. And once again, I'd like to thank uh, all my viewers. Um, so far, uh, we're in a winning streak in terms of uh, gaining subscribers. And I guess I owe it to each and every one of you for um, telling more people about this uh, channel. I'm pretty confident that um, what's going on here is that uh, YouTube is not advertising ASL and war game channels. And it's unfortunate because the more people know about history of war, the more people study and keep the memory alive for all of those who fought and what they fought for, the less likely we are to accept war as a as a means of uh, as a as a means of uh, uh, resolving uh, international issues. I hope that um, I hope that uh, transpires in the real world uh, with. Uh, an abatement to war, not uh, an increase to war. Um, with that said, I'll conclude right here and stay tuned, guys. There's lots more good stuff to come. Take care. Bye.